but some good up too. And today I'm going to be talking about series one. We're splitting the video into two parts. So the first part I'm going to be talking about is Rose to Dalek. So five episodes. And then the next video we're going to talk about the other lot. And uh, with the other lot being Stephen Moffat's first episode and Russell T Davis ending the series and stuff like that. But with this video we're going to talk about how, Mo uh, how Stephen not Stephen Moffat, Russell T Davis um, sorted out the era, planned it out in this little episode really, it's a starter pack for the classic fans to go, alright let's give it a go and for new Who fans to just grab on board and start the journey. And what a better place to do it than the ninth top to grab in Rose's hand and go in, run. And we run with him. This is the start, the first thing we see of the ninth top is run and he drags us into the adventure and yeah the nesting consciousness and the autons are doing a fantastic job of being menacing and them killing dropping their hands out and shooting and killing people it's quite it's quite a it's like Stephen Moffat thing to do you know the weeping angels statues you've got these pre present day things that happen in real life we walk past them every day and making them scary and that was a good thing from the Autons to do but it wasn't from the Christopher Eccleston era it was actually from the third Doctor era so it was quite a nice little cameo of seeing how they still work the same way just better effects really and Christopher Eccleston is an amazing Doctor in this story he's quite mysterious and intriguing for classic fans to go oh he's not our Doctor we don't, he doesn't act the same way but we later learn in episode 2 that he's been in the time war you know, he's changing a bit. And with that, we've got Rose as well, helping him along the way to ease into his performance of the Doctor again and feel confident about himself. And I think this episode is a brilliant start of how Rose, not telling us about the time war with episode two, but giving us a little bit of intriguement of who is he for classic fans to go, all right, we're gonna try and get him both of this with new who fans going, all right, what, what do we need to know about this show? We learn about the TARDIS, we learn about the Sonic Screwdriver, and we learn about the Doctor's motives and where he's at. And yeah, he's, look at the ears, he's just changed. You get little references of him being just turned into the Ninth Doctor. Chris Rexon did an amazing important performance with that. And the comedic was quite funny, not just through this episode, throughout the whole series, his comedic he mentions in interviews that he's not that good with comedic stuff but he does it amazingly well in this and he also is strict and like you stupid ape you know he loses temper with you they get angry but in one minute he'll be like hey up come on let's go fantastic and they will be like that so he's got mood swings and it's intriguing to see his performance really and with Billy Piper um, she's woken up She's bored, she gets up for work, eats chips, goes to bed, same routine, flip, go to go get up, see boyfriend, go to bed. She's bored of the routine and then the night doctor comes along, drags her and says, run, and we go off with the adventure with him. We as he grabs Rose and goes run, saves her life, we come on that adventure and we start to see the doctor, really. Um, We've also got uh, the new things of the show. We've got little uh, things like the companion not being too scared. She's feisty. She a fight back routine that the classic era did a lot of. Oh, Doctor, help. No, they're not doing any of that. They're doing, oh, Doctor, I'll come and rescue you. That's what the female has changed. And we've also got, um, just checking my notes here to be make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh yeah, Mickey's took that role, seems to be. He's quite nervous and scared, and it's a bit like, mm. but you see him later progress, so it's all right. You know, it's a brilliant character arc of him being wimpy and scared to being feisty and ready for anything, which the Doctor's made him have to do. And um, we've also got, um, talked about the writers, talked about the Doctor, Mickey, Rose, new things. Nesting consciousness. Yeah, I've talked about episode one. Right. Episode, uh, also, I'm going to rank this out of ten, a nine out of ten. I think it's in a phenomenal episode. There may be a bit parts where it's a bit slow, so I won't give it the full ten out of ten. But it definitely is up there. 
episode two is a little bit. Mm. Episode two is um, uh, Rose and the Doctor's dynamic has changed a little bit. She's fight. She's like I said, Rose is feisty. She's like, hold on, you let the TARDIS get inside my head without even asking me. No, you'll just have to cheap shots. You know. So she's having to go back, and there's a little bit of um, reminds me of Clara and Twelve. You know, them fighting each other a bit. But they also care about each other, and they want to impress each other and make themselves happy. Um, that was a nice little quick brief thing to say. I'm not just going to be here for you and to impress, you know. You can't just keep cheap shots at me. She's going to be fighting back, which is quite nice to see. Uh, Cass Cassandra. Um, yeah, she returns again in David Tennant era. Um, Cassandra's a bit alright. The motives of wanting money and being the last human and moisturise me was a bit dead after a while. The first 10 minutes just was alright. It came to drag and it was a bit like, ugh. And these little things that come along and kill people. It was quite a boring episode with all these different monsters. But the face of Bo made a cameo and the first of many and he's an amazing character. Um, Earth getting destroyed was intriguing. The Ninth Doctor saying everything has its time, everything ends. I don't think another Doctor would let the Earth be destroyed like that, I don't think. But then again, there was nothing on the Earth that said so, apart from one human, I guess, like, wait for me, just go, no, no. Um, aliens, yeah, not that good, boring, interesting, the tree people were quite nice in character, and there was a little glimpse of the time war before the end of the story, where we took, learned a bit more about the time war, there was a war, the Daleks versus the Time Lords and Smash Bang, um, yeah, that's pretty much basically it for the episode. There's not a lot going on, so I'm going to give that a 5 out of 10. Yeah, it's not the best. Then we're going to go to episode 3 with, I do believe, um, Mark Gattis wrote this episode. It's a, I don't know the name of it. It's Ghost Story, which we have um, quite a few funny little things. We also have The Undertaker as being quite dark in some way. Getting Rose and dragging her off, you know, that's quite... Dark, I would say. Um, the Maud, the dead coming back from alive, that, that scared me as a kid. I do remember this episode being scary. And the ghost, the, uh, the veil, are they called? Um, I don't know the name of these creatures. I think they're called the veil. No, I've got that wrong. Write down in the comments down below, so I want to know. Um, yeah. It's... Just looking at the notes again to make sure I'm not missing anything. Undertakers have talked about them. The gas, the gelf, that's it, the gelf. So, basically, the gelf are from the Time War. They've done uh, a lot of the Time Wars getting referenced in this because it's quite early on. So, the gelf have tried to escape the Time War by coming out of their bodies, but they can't survive without any body in physical form. So, they are in the gas, they're surviving in that, but when they can get a chance, they can steal humans' bodies that die but then they want to get more. They want all their people to be safe, so they start killing, they take the bodies and then use the bodies to kill more people so more bodies are sp spare for them to take over, basically. And then the Ninth Doctor lets his guard down, he trusts them and goes, okay, right, um, yeah, you can have these bodies, why not? And Rose is like, well, that's not gonna happen. This doesn't happen in the future. And the Ninth Doctor says, well, anything can change like that, so. Uh, the Night of Doctor lets his guard down and says, yeah, go on. And then he realises they're going to take over everyone's body, even the living. So he has to try and stop them. And um, Gwen, not Gwen Cooper, but the person who plays the same actor in sort of ways, uh, she can see through the time vortex because she's lived near the um, um, Cardiff Rift really. She's lived near the rift for too long that she's starting to see things for the future and she finds a way to stop them and blows them off really uh, using the gas which um, we have another amazing character of um, we have, hold on Charles Dickens, yes, Charles Dickens he's an amazing character fun, intriguing um, the Ninth Doctor, just get along with him. He just didn't get along with him at the start, but as soon as he realised who it, who it is, he's like, oh, I'm a big fan. And then they just get along. It's quite interesting, their dynamic. And then 
Um, yeah, it's quite a brief, easy, dark London feel. Well, it's not even London, it's Cardiff. Um, but it's quite a scary, eerie setting. So I'm going to have to give this a 6 out of 10 because it's better than the last one, but it's not up there, I don't think. Um, now, 4 and 5. Episode 4 and 5 is World War 3, and there's another name to this, but I've forgotten it. But it's World War 3. And we've got the comedic values again. Uh, Rose being missing. Rose has been late for 12 months, the, the Ninth Doctor's put her in the wrong place, which is interesting, we don't see that with companions, the Ninth Doctor messing up, and the mom getting worried, Jackie, she slaps the Doctor and says, who are you, why are you here, and then she later learns that he's an alien, she calls up the investigators uh, to take the Ninth Doctor out, really, she doesn't want him near her daughter, but then Unit get involved, which is quite nice to see, more of a classic era vibe, unit back but they didn't really do much they're more just soldiers really they they could have done more with unit but yeah like the night doctor said they wouldn't recognize him with his new face um we've also got bad wolf reappearing with that guy straight uh, that little kid um doing stuff to the tardis on the back graffiti um the cliffhangers the first cliffhanger of the series classic back again so that was quite nice We've got Danger of the Slovene, and then uh, attacking Rose, attacking Rose's mom and Mickey, and attacking the Ninth Doctor, and then we, we're like, how is he going to get out of this? Of course, it's the Ninth Doctor, he gets out of it. Um, the Slovene are brilliant, funny creatures. I really like them. A lot of people don't like them, but I think they're very funny and very intriguing. But Sarah Jane really took that to her adventures, really, so I'm glad they got more of out of them in that way. Um, Slovene unit, Mickey um, Mickey got offered to travel with the Ninth Doctor but he didn't take it. He will later take that, uh, he's got more stronger later on so he can travel with the Ninth Doctor which we'll see in series 2. Um, Downing Street, get a little more glimpses of London, Big Ben getting trashed by a fake alien that's been a pig dressed in an alien suit for the Slovene to do a distraction and take over all these important people so they can sell the earth off basically and uh, kill everyone. Um, the TV news reports, getting actual real TV of them time with Blue Pizza and news reporters was quite realistic, it felt more real so that was a good idea. Uh, I really enjoyed these two parters really, I think they, they worked so well for series one. So the first episode will be 7 out of 10, the next episode will be 8 out of 10 as a whole. Episode 4 and 5 I would give it overall an 8 out of 10, I think they're really good and I would love to see them return one day maybe. Next up is episode 6 I think, is it episode 6? Yes, so I've been lying, episode 5 we're not just doing 1 to 5, we're doing episode 1 to 6, so yeah. Um, the Daleks, the Dalek story, right, now Robert Sherman, I think the writer who did this was incredible and amazing, he taught the Daleks in different ways and he made more of a character to the Dalek being attacked and escaped from the Time War, again the references there, it's all connecting, it's all intriguing. And we learn a bit more about the Ninth Doctor and the Dalek head on fighting. He's like, I'm not a Dalek, you'd make a good Dalek sort of thing. We're not the same sort of references. The Ninth Doctor losing it was interesting to see. <laughs> Fully hatred for these creatures. Um, the Time War, and yet again, very present. Um, the Ninth Doctor, he, his fear and his anger and his guilt through, these, through seeing his arch enemy and also when Rose is meant to be dead he feels the sorrow and like shock and horror really which is quite we see all these different emotions with the Night Doctor and we get to see he has two hearts I don't think we've seen that since the third Doctor era I think he got a reference so he had two hearts I think they might have got a few more references for the two hearts but we get to learn a bit more about the Night Doctor having different organs and stuff which was quite different um, let me just check my list again. Uh, Van Staten, yes. Um, the guy that is in con 
control of the internet dragging stuff down 2012 this episode was meant to be based in um, yeah he was quite a villain he was very money money bred he wants to be wealthy he wants to be known he wants to be all that and that is his downfall by his workers the workers hate him by the end of the episode for how many people have died because he won't kill what needs to be killed because he wants to just sell it on and make profit and stuff so he gets a sacrifice he gets his mind wiped at the end of the episode which is justified and so i think we're all like yes for that and um the base is quite interesting it's very claustrophobic them running around not much to go on areas doors shutting the daleks chasing them it's coming it can get up the stairs as well the daleks showing off with all these shields so it can't the bullets can't get it um it killing all these guards and moving around and hovering against the stairs it shows all these things the dice will do also tactical you don't just shoot them it shoots the water to let you them all in certain places and it just shows showing off it it shows what a dialect can do and it absorbs stuff from the internet so it knows all the knowledge it needs to know um adam a random he's going to be in the next episode for random reason i think he worked for this episode he doesn't work later on and it soon gets kicked out but yeah he's pointless to return but he worked well in this episode i think for rose yeah that, were, that was quite nice and also in the museum with the little reference of the cybermen that was intriguing to see a little glimpse of what the night doctor thinks about them really um, yeah, that was series one basically. I'm gonna write rate out of this Dalek episode though. I'm gonna say an eight out of, out of ten again. So yeah, overall we get an eight to nine out of ten with a few low ones, but it's all good. It's all based, and I think I'm looking forward to the next load of episodes to talk about. So yeah, please stick around for the next part of series one. That video will be probably up on the same day as this video. I'm gonna release some more. But I'm going to watch them now, and you're going to get on on the same day, kind of. I'm going to try and release a video every Saturday. I've done a load more. I've just gone to London Comic Con, so I've been lucky enough to meet Christopher Eccleston and the Night Doctor there. So if you can see from a distance, I'll do a later video on that. Um, by the time, actually, this video comes out, you will see me meeting Christopher Eccleston and John Barrowman again. So I'll be talking about them and a little opinions on their series I guess um, yeah that has been series 1 guys what have you thought about series 1 I'm going to be talking more about series 1 in the next video so stick around for that and check out my London Comic Con video that I haven't even filmed yet so I'm doing this timey wimey basically it'll be out before this video um, yeah you've been watching Go Up 2 comment down below subscribe get this video shared so we uh, so everyone's aware, aware of Go Up 2 and yeah Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.